Hey everyone, in this video we'll be talking about how to plot the complex numbers on a graph. The only difference between a complex number on a graph and a real number on a graph is that the axes of the graph are not the y x and the y axis, but in fact they are the real and the imaginary axis. We'll be first going through the uh, name of the diagram. As you can see, it is written over here. It is called the Argan diagram. We'll see how a complex graph is different from a numbers graph. After that, we'll be plotting some complex numbers and we'll do some exercise regarding different types of complex numbers that we can plot in the Argan diagram. And in the end, we'll be talking about how a conjugate affects the plotting of a different number on a complex graph. So as you can see over here, the name of the graph on which you plot the complex numbers is called the Argan diagram. So the definition is this, that the complex numbers can be presented geometrically on an Argan diagram. And this is what it looks like. So basically what you see over here is the normal graph that you've been working for working on till now. You have the x axis over here and you have the y axis over here. Now this is we're going to use the same graph. The only difference you're going to have is that the x axis and y axis over here are going to be changed. There's going to be no x and y axis because we don't have x and y plot points in a complex number. We have real numbers and imaginary numbers. So this will be changed into the real and the imaginary axis. So instead of the x axis, we have the real axis and instead of the y axis, we would have the imaginary axis. That is how we convert a normal graph into an Argan diagram. Now this graph over here is good enough for us to plot complex numbers on it. So let's take a complex number. We'll take a complex number A is equal to 2. Now you might be wondering how is this a complex number since it does not have an imaginary part, but you see it does have an imaginary part. The imaginary part over here is 0. So this a is equal to 2 is actually equal to a is equal to 2 plus 0 i. So before I tell you where this will be plotted, why don't we go ahead and plot it yourself so that you can confirm it afterwards. So a is equal to 2, the only thing we have over here is the real point. So the real point, the real number that will be plotted on a real axis. So this is how it is. We're going to plot a is equal to 2. Since it has i is equal to 0, we don't have to go to the imaginary number. Let's take another point. This is negative of 3i. Now, this is also a real number because it has an imaginary part, but it has no real part, which would basically mean that A, sorry, that B, uh, the real axis would not come into play over here, and the real part of this number is equal to zero. So before I tell you where this would be plotted, why don't you go ahead and plot it yourself so that you would know much better where you made a mistake if you did. So B is equal to negative of 3i. So what I'm basically wondering is we're going to plot it over here because, you know, negative 3 and i because it's on the imaginary axis. So that is where B would be on the imaginary axis. Moving on. Now we have this value C. Now C over here has both the real axis will have both the real number and the imaginary number. So it will be plotted on the real axis and the imaginary axis. So if you look over here, what is the real value over here? The real value is negative 2. That is over here. But it also has i over here. So sorry, the negative 2 is over here and it also has i over here. But the i is actually 1i. So where would you plot this? From what I know from in my limited knowledge, I think it's going to be plotted somewhere over here. Negative 2 plus i. That is negative 2 on the real axis and 1i on the imaginary axis. So if you look over here, it, that, that is exactly where it is plotted. Negative 2 plus i. Moving on now 4 minus i that is 4 is the real number of here and negative i is the imaginary number of here. Where would you plot this? We will look at the number over here real axis 4 which basically means over here and negative i means on the imaginary axis somewhere below this origin so somewhere around over here. So 4 this will be pointy 4 minus i. Moving on, let's take another point, E. Now that is 4 plus i. Now it is similar to the point that we already plotted on the Argon diagram, that is 4 minus i. So this point over here, 4 plus i, where do you think would that go? Well, one thing is similar to the previous one, that is 4. The real part is similar. So we know it would be somewhere around over here because the real axis is 4. So we can plot it either over here or we can plot it over here. So we know that 4 negative of i was plotted below the word, uh, horizontal axis, below the real axis because the imaginary part was negative. What about this one? This has a positive imaginary axis, positive imaginary part. So we're going to plot it in the positive region of the imaginary axis. And where do you think would this go? Why don't you go ahead and plot it so that you can be sure that you know what's going on over here. So this is how we're going to plot it. 4 plus i over here. 4 on the real axis, 4. And then on the imaginary part, that is i. 
so you can go about this from any perspective you can first look at the imaginary part or you can look at the real part but either way just take one pick one convention and then carry that throughout your life whenever you study math and engineering like for example i use that i look at the real part and then i plot the imaginary part with respect to it which basically means that first i look okay four that means this is a four over here on the real axis so somewhere over here no matter where it goes positive towards positive infinity or negative infinity or either it is zero somewhere over here it's going to be plotted the imaginary part is going to be plotted someplace over here so let's look at another thing now now let's talk about the conjugates so we discussed in the previous lecture that the in the one in which we talked about the division of complex numbers we talked about the conjugates so what are conjugates conjugates are basically that we change the sign of the imaginary number which basically means is that 4 plus i over here that is point e would be changed into 4 minus i so that would be your conjugate so 4 minus i is conjugate is 4 plus i minus 2 plus i is conjugate is minus 2 negative of i so when we change the sign of the um, imaginary part we make it a conjugate so over here a graph will give you a better understanding of what a conjugate is a graph will help you better understand visualize what a conjugate actually is so if you see over here d point was 4 plus i over here now what's this conjugate the conjugate of 4 uh, sorry d was 4 minus i what's the conjugate of 4 minus i the conjugate of 4 minus i is 4 plus i how do we plot that we plot that with the reflection on the real axis now pay close attention to this that conjugates actually reflected on the real axis which basically means is that 4 negative i is over here so 4 positive i would be reflected on the uh, real axis so 4 will not change this value will remain the same only the value of i will change of course the easier way to do this which i prefer for you to do it on a rough graph or a rough scratch pad which is that first you write down the conjugate of this 4 negative i the conjugate of this you write it down as 4 plus i after you written that you just go ahead and plot it like if you write down the conjugate of 4 minus i you write it down as 4 plus i so 4 plus 4 negative i was over here you plot 4 plus i over here it's as simple as that once you're done with that you would know that the conjugate is actually uh, the mirror of the first point that you were taking the conjugate of but if you are much if you want to do it quickly then the easier way is that you just find the mirror of the point that you already plotted but of course you're bound to make some mistakes in that so my suggestion to you is that you find the conjugate and you plot it like any other number so basically this slide points out that every complex number can be presented by a unique point on an argon diagram which of course is true which is just straightforward it's no rocket science over here any number can be plotted on an argon diagram any complex number can be plotted on an argon diagram whether it has no imaginary part like a over here or whether it has no real part like b over here you can plot this over here in any way so now let's talk about the modulus in an argon diagram what is the modulus of an argon diagram so we'll take one point that is x plus y this is the complex number that we have with us right now and we, we call it z we plot it on, on an argon diagram we plot it on a complex plane with x over here the imaginary part of here x plus i y this is what it becomes now we want to find the modulus of this so what is the modulus the modulus of a complex number is the length of the vector oz z being the point over here this point over here represented by the, represented by the crosshair and o is the origin so this line will basically be representing the modulus remember the pythagoras theorem the pythagoras theorem is basically a theorem for uh, triangles uh, it is used uh, to basically find out the hypotenuse or if you have one of the sides missing so basically it's a formula uh, to it's a relationship basically of the three sides of a right angle triangle so we have this triangle imaginary triangle over here we, we don't have to draw it every time we have the x over here with the y over here which is the x value of the complex number and the imaginary value of the complex number and using this we find out the z of this complex number how do we do this simple way this is how we use the pythagoras theorem r square is equal to x squared plus y squared so r over here is this red line over here we're calling it r 
so if we have to find the value of r if you know you can call it anything you want but we are just using convention r over here so if you have to find the value of r we use r square is equal to x square plus y square so we move the root over here r is equal to under root x square plus y square now this r we'll be calling it mod z modulus because we are going to find the modulus of this point so this is how we're going to do it this is what it's called basically this is how why it's known as a modulus because this is represented in a modulus form so we replace the r with this and we get this so this is all there is to the modulus if you have to find the modulus of a point this is what you do how do you do it you basically find out the real value and the magic value. forget this triangle forget the x and the y just concentrate on the real value and the complex value uh, imaginary value of the complex number if you just concentrate on that that this will be a piece of cake for you you pre presented this real value and the imaginary value on the graph in the form of z then you wanted to find the modulus of this point and how did you find that by taking the square of the real part and taking the square of the complex part and unrooting them and this is what you get in the end which is known as the z modulus this is the modulus of a complex number that we use an argon diagram to find there are many other things that you can find using a, a graph but right now in this lecture this is all we'll be doing right now so what did we do in this lecture is that we basically found out how what a complex graph is it's called an argon diagram uh, how to plot complex numbers on a diagram complex plane how to find modulus of a point any particular point using this relationship over here so when we go into the next lecture we'll be finding out the argument of this point and argument is basically the angle that this point makes thank you very much for this